A Formula One car is one of the fastest machines on the planet, racing around the most exciting tracks in the world at speeds of over 360 km per hour. But you might be surprised to learn that all that speed and power comes from an engine that's actually smaller than what you'll find in many family cars on the road today. Over the years, we've seen all manner of different engine sizes and configurations in Formula One. But since the 1990s, F1 engines have been getting progressively smaller, dropping down from 3.5-litre V10s, V8s and V12s to 3 litres in 1995, and then again down to 2.4-litre V8s in 2006. But in 2014, the F1 rulebook mandated a sea change in engine regulations, and the watchword for these new power units was efficiency. Firstly, the size of the engine was reduced down to just 1.6 litres, or 1600cc, and a turbocharger was added. You might very well have an engine that size or even bigger in your own road car, but there are some big differences between what's under the bonnet of the car parked on your driveway and the V6 that sits behind each driver on the F1 grid. For starters, the turbocharged 1.6 litre engine in a typical family car might produce around 160 horsepower. But a modern Formula One car has over 1,000 brake horsepower, and the combustion engine alone produces 850 to 900 brake horsepower. Formula One cars, like many modern road cars, are of course hybrids, and some of that power comes from the electric motor and some from the engine, but we're going to get to that. So how can an engine smaller than that found in millions of cars on the road today create so much more power and propel a Formula One car to such astonishing speeds? Well, to answer that question, we need to understand how combustion engines work. In very simple terms, a standard road car internal combustion engine running on petrol works by taking fuel and air into a cylinder and squeezing them together. A spark then causes this mixture to combust, and the expansion of the combustion gases pushes the piston to generate power. This is known as the four-stroke cycle, Intake, compression, power, and exhaust. Or even more simply put, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. An F1 engine works on the same basic principle, but is of course more precise and more refined. That alone is responsible for a large amount of that power increase. There is of course more to this story. Like the very latest generation of production car engines, F1 engines feature direct fuel injection, where the fuel is mostly injected directly into the combustion chamber, giving a much cleaner and more efficient burn. F1 engines also have a much higher compression ratio than a normal petrol fueled road car engine, which is a complicated way of saying they do more squeezing in the suck, squeeze, bang, blow cycle than the engine in your road car might. The more that they squeeze, the bigger and more efficient the bang that follows it is. And it's the bang where the fuel and air mixture explodes that creates that all-important power. The final secret weapon that has seen Formula One power levels escalate dramatically since 2014 is a technology commonly found on diesel engines, pre-chamber ignition. In other words, Formula One engine manufacturers have found a clever way to get some of the fuel already burning before it reaches the main combustion chamber. Controlling how the air-fuel mixture explodes is the real secret to generating big power numbers, and pre-chamber ignition allows the engineers to get a more complete burn of the fuel in the chamber, further increasing efficiency. But crucially, that's only one part of the story, because in F1, the engine, or by its full name, Internal Combustion Engine, or ICE for short, is only one part of the power unit. Most F1 cars have been hybrid since 2009, with electrical power adding to the horsepower generated by the combustion engine. But in 2014, that electrical power was increased dramatically, with two electric motors now used with each combustion engine. The first of these is the MGUK, which stands for Motor Generator Unit Kinetic. This device is connected directly to the crankshaft and it collects energy that would otherwise be lost when the car is braking. That recovered energy is then stored in the car's battery until the MGUK deploys it back through the crankshaft, some of it at the command of the driver to give them a power boost, either for some extra speed on a qualifying lap or when trying to overtake another car or even when defending from a driver behind. 
This is a similar principle to technology used in electric and hybrid road cars, which use regenerative braking to charge the drive battery. The MG UK on a Formula One car can deliver up to 160 horsepower, which on its own is approaching what an entire 1.6 litre family car can deliver out on the road. And from 2026, the MG UK will become much more powerful, generating over 450 horsepower, which will be almost half the power unit's total output. The second electric motor is the MG UH, which stands for Motor Generator Unit Heat. This motor does not directly put power through the driven wheels. Instead, it's part of the turbocharger assembly and takes waste energy from the engine's exhaust gases, which spin the generator to create power. That is then fed into the battery or directly into the MG UK to be used when needed. So as well as the turbocharged combustion engine, a Formula One power unit also has those two electric motors adding to the power available to each driver. But even without those extra gizmos, the ICE alone in a Formula One car is many times more powerful than its road car equivalent of the same size. So how else does it generate so much more grunt? First off, a road car engine might rev to around 5,000 RPM or revolutions per minute if it's a diesel, or 7 to 9,000 RPM if it's petrol fueled. But a Formula One combustion engine can rev all the way up to around 15,000 RPM, though most rarely exceed 13,000. In fact, if we go back to the suck, squeeze, bang, blow, four-stroke cycle, in a Formula One car, that process happens around 200 times in the same amount of time it takes you to blink. Over a single qualifying lap, that equates to about 50,000 times. So as usual, in Formula One, it's all happening a lot quicker on track than it is on the road. Another big reason a Formula One engine is so much more powerful is all to do with efficiency, which was a key factor when the current engine rules were drawn up back in 2014. If an engine was 100% thermally efficient, that would mean it was extracting the absolute maximum amount of potential energy from each drop of fuel it burned. Road car engines are in fact only around 30% thermally efficient. The rest of the potential energy is lost in heat, noise and vibrations. When the current F1 engine regulations were designed, the intention was to see if the white heat of Grand Prix competition plus the incredible engineering might of the Formula One manufacturers could be used to improve on that 30% figure. To do this, the rules not only mandated a maximum amount of fuel a car could use in a Grand Prix, currently 110 kilograms, but they also mandated a maximum fuel flow limit. That is how much fuel can flow through to the engine each second, and that's currently set at 100 kilograms per hour. When this rule was brought in, suddenly there was a lot of potential performance to be gained if your engine could extract more power from each drop of fuel it used. Every little bit more you could squeeze out meant more power available to the driver and potentially an advantage over your rivals. Since that rule was introduced, F1 engineers have managed to drive up the thermal efficiency of their engines to over 50%. That's a huge improvement, which not only delivers more speed for the drivers on track, but also helps their road car counterparts improve the thermal efficiency of the engines being designed for the next generation of consumer cars. So an F1 power unit is a hybrid with electric motors working alongside an incredibly efficient internal combustion engine to deliver well over 1,000 brake horsepower under each driver's right foot. Despite its enormous power, that ICE is based around the same fundamental principles as the engine in your road car. But like most things in Formula One, it's the materials, the design and the detailed fine tuning that make the difference from having the power to drive to work and back or do the weekly shop in your family hatchback to powering past your rivals at 360 kilometers per hour at Monza or down the Las Vegas Strip.